guys, welcome back to my channel. Those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you will learn a thing or two. Now, today is still freezing cold and my studio is not any warmer. Um, but you know what? One of my subscribers asked me to help her render sheer. So here I am. I mean, I guess it makes sense since most designers are designing for winter and summer and designing for summer and winter, but just looking at this makes my insides turn to icicles. But I am a slave to my subscribers. Okay, no, not really. She asked nicely, so here we go. Number one. There are a million kinds of sheer fabrics. And so this is actually going to end up being the first of a series where I teach you categories within the category of sheer fabrics. Today we're going to go over kind of basic, soft, drapey sheer fabrics like silk chiffon and organza, uh, cotton batiste and lawn and gauze, you know, that kind of thing. And then there are laces. There's Velvet Burnout, there's Clear Vinyl, which is having a heyday right now. Uh, we have Sport Mesh, we have Fancy Netting, like things that go under big ball gowns like Tulle and Ned and Crinoline, and then a fancy schmancy veil netting like Pont Esprit, Swiss Dot, French Net. So since there are so many, I'm going to be breaking them into smaller videos because who wants to watch an hour long YouTube video? Nobody. Let's start with this one. This one is organza. It's a nice matte one. Okay. Some of the polyester organzas are super shiny. Organza is nice. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer, has a bit more body than chiffon. It's a less slinky, still plenty sheer. Like most sheer fabrics, frays like crazy easily. Okay. And it frays really easily because of the construction. You know, shears are generally constructed really open weave. And so it's really easy to start pulling hairs. I mean, not hairs, yarns off. The number one thing you got to consider when you are designing or illustrating shears is that we can see all the guts. And I know that's kind of a duh, but sometimes you need to be reminded of the duh. Even if you are completely lining something made out of organza, like let's say you want to contrast lining so that you get this like black sheen over a red lining or something, you're still going to see all the construction. So anytime you make a seam, you know, you're, you're going to have multiple layers of the sheer fabric and it's going to end up looking darker. And so anytime you have a seam, a closure, a pocket, anything, it's going to be much more noticeable because it's going to be much more opaque, AKA darker. These hems, when you hem shears, typically, especially with chiffons and organzas, you're going to baby roll it. So you're going to, on the sewing machine, you're going to take something that rolls your fabric and then top stitches it down. And so you're going to see like a nice dark line along the bottom as you hem them. So these kinds of things are all going to be visible. And you're going to have to illustrate all those things because you need to illustrate your design accurately. Okay? Because if you don't take those things into consideration, you might get your first mock-up done and you're like, why are there all these dark lines everywhere? Oh yeah, that's fabric doubled over and stuff. And maybe you really hate that. On that note, shears are darker anytime it's doubled over. So if you're going to make a super drapey skirt, keep in mind that, you know, all these drapes bunched together is going to create a darker, more opaque look rather than just your singular swatch. That's why whenever I work with designers and design students, I tell them, you know, it does you no good just to have a little swatch. You got to really like get yourself a quarter or a half yard of the fabric so you can feel it. You can drape with it. You can see what it looks like falling. Now let's get to drawing. Number one, I say that a lot. Like I make a lot of lists. It helps me in my head. 
Number one, whenever you are drawing your sheer garments, you're gonna see whatever's underneath, whether it's the body or whatever they're wearing underneath. For the purposes of this demo, I've drawn two figures here and they are wearing the same exact dress, except one is opaque and one is sheer. Same pose, everything. Now this one is just turtleneck, blue on top with bishop sleeves and a, and a circle skirt, no big deal. This one, you see all of the things underneath. And so whenever I draw shears, I draw the entire body or just if she's only wearing a sheer skirt and an opaque top, I just draw the whole legs. For modesty's sake, I gave her a little pair of panties, but otherwise you can see everything underneath. I tend to do these tutorials with marker because marker dries very quickly and so I can move the demo along quickly. There are definitely going to be things where the painting technique for something and the marker technique for something will be different, but for this, basic shears, you can use the same techniques for marker or for paint. The only difference would be you would have to wait for each layer to dry before you move on to the next step. Whenever I render shears, I always render whatever's going on underneath first. So in this case, I'm going to render the skin tone. Now, when you render the skin tone, keep in mind this one rule. Shears are always sheerest when they're closest to the skin. Now, when you're rendering just a regular opaque dress, I would just take my skin tone color and just color the skin. And then I would take my shadow color and I would add shadows. Most of you are familiar with my three kinds of shadows method for shading fashion illustration figures. If you are not, I do have a whole video on that. I'm gonna drop the link below. I'm gonna pretend my light source is over here. So here's my shadows on the neck, under the jaw, dark side of the face, this hand blocked by the skirt, this side of this hand, you know, drop shadow under this really large wide skirt and this side of her calf and then this one i'm going to just put all in shadow because it's tucked in the back very very far back now skin tones for our shears i'm going to do the same technique for skin tone in all the areas where the skin is exposed the hand, but not the part where her thumb is kind of tucked behind the skirt. Also here, just right up to that line. Where the skin is under the shears, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to pick a marker that is just a hair lighter than the skin tone that I use in the exposed areas. Number two, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the pencil line. Number three, I'm going to render as lightly as possible. Number four, I'm going to render more in the areas where it's going to be sheer. So remember when I said that shears are sheerest when they're closer to the skin? So the tops of her shoulders up here, you know, the, the, the dress is really close to her skin, so those areas are going to be really sheer. These areas where the skirt is billowing out, not only is it far away from the knees, so it's going to be less sheer, but you're going to have all these drapes in front and so you're gonna see less of the skin around her knees and the bottom half of her thighs. Also these drapes around her stomach. This turtleneck is folded over and that's a minimum of three layers of fabric so you're not gonna see a whole lot of skin tone on her neck. You're gonna think about these things and kind of figure out the construction when you're putting together shears.
but don't make it streaky. It's still gonna be smooth. And again, you're gonna put that in there. You can go in there with a colorless blender if you like. And kind of lighten those things out and blend them in and all that good stuff. I'm going to pretend that we have a little pair of silver panties in here. I am going to drop in a little bit of shadow. And again, I'm going to paint it in really lightly. So just this arm is a little bit darker. Oh, remember we can see the thumb, rest of their hand in here. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do a basic fashion illustration sketch with opaque fabrics, I have a video on that that, you know, kind of goes slowly step to step. And I'll drop a link in the info box below. But here, I'm just going to drop in the color really quick. Basic rules for illustration. Render in the direction of the garment's grain and the drape. It really helps everything come together and yeah i could do this a little bit more beautifully but i'm trying to move fast here because this is not the focal point of today's tutorial and then i'm going to take a darker shade of the same color and using my light source, I'm going to put in the shadows. We're going to do all the same things, but we're going to do it on top of the skin tone. When you have an opaque skirt, you have your drapes and you have your inside drapes. You have your shadows. But when you have something sheer, you have a couple of things, different things going on. So you have your outside drape shape. And normally you would just see a little bit of the back. But when you have a sheer, you see all of it. And so these areas are going to be darker because it's the fabric doubled and tripled over. When you have a skirt like this, whenever I have a skirt, number one, the angle of the hem is the same as the angle of the last fitted spot. So whether it's the waistband or let's say you have a hip yoke and the hip is really tight and then it flares out, or you have a mermaid skirt and it's fitted to the knees and then it flares out. Whenever you're drawing the hem of a skirt and it's the same length all the way around, the angle of the hem of the skirt is going to be the same as the angle of the last fitted spot. You're not going to ever draw a straight hem. You're going to draw a curving hem because perspective. Basically, you're looking down at the hem. So you're going to draw an ellipse. Okay, so whenever I draw a draping hem, I draw the ellipse of the hem first, and then I add my drapes. With the sheer, you have to draw the back of the skirt too. Obviously, your legs sit in here, and you're not going to see these parts. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to color more the back 
of all your garments where you can see them. I'm going to take that same marker that I used to color all of it and I'm going to color lightly back here behind the legs, the back of this skirt. And then I'm going to color in the areas that are doubled over. So this turtleneck, this waistband. And then I'm gonna go in and figure out the drapes. For that, I'm gonna use a slightly darker color. My first color was a 50% warm gray. And now I'm going to use a 60% warm gray just one shade up. If I were doing this with paints, I would just mix a color and then I would create a lot of different dilutions with different quantities of water. If you're doing a sheer yellow, just buy a different bunch of different shades of the same yellow, et cetera, et cetera. So for this, I'm gonna, you know, put in the folds. If you can't see what's going on, just redraw it. So I blew it up really big. So you can see what I'm doing. So I drew the drape in the front and the back, and then I laid down some of my 50% gray. I'm gonna take my 60% gray and I'm going to just make it dark here and here and emphasize where it got folded over. And then I'm going to take my 50% gray again, and I'm going to shadow the skirt. It's all darker on this side, and then darker on the left side of each drape, right? So I'm going to put that in so that you're starting to see some dimension to the skirt. I'm going to put in some more shadows to the blouse so that, again, you're starting to see kind of the 3D-ness all around. So we're just layering the 50 and the 60s to get the effect that we want. Then I'm gonna take my 80% warm gray because I would normally use my 70, but for the life of me, I cannot find it anywhere, sorry. And I'm gonna go in and put in those construction details where it would be darkest. So armholes, you know, would get a French seam, punch out the darkest drapes here and here. And I would see a side seam because she's a little bit twisted. And I'm gonna do the hem coming all the way around. For the back, which is essentially on the inside, I would do it in a lighter color because I don't want it to pop as much. Now, the next step, now that I've added all my color and everything, I would go in with a pencil and put in all of my design details. Let's say I drew a really beautiful face here. You know, I have this drapey turtleneck going on, the drape of the blouse, armhole, gathers in the sleeve. Let's pretend I drew a hand that doesn't look like a freaking lobster claw. And then on this one, and as you know, I like to cover any work so I'm not smearing any pencil. I would make sure that anything that's not covered in a sheer gets that really nice, solid line quality. So it looks really visible. And if I were to add anything in here, I would make sure that it's done really lightly. You don't want things to really pop under the skirt. 
You know, sometimes I'll go in and lightly redraw the legs, you know, maybe add darker nipples. You know, if she had like lace paneling in her panties, you know, you want to draw that, but you want to make sure that those kinds of details are really light and faint as they would be covered by another fabric, right? If you want, you can kind of emphasize, you know, this clavicle and the shoulders because that's really where it's sheerest, right? Where it's resting on your collarbone and your shoulder. All right, to recap today's lesson, number one, there's a million different sheer fabrics out there in varying degrees of sheerness. And so I am going to produce a bunch of videos to help you tackle each subcategory of shears at a time. Number two, shears always show all the construction. And so you have to design with that in mind, how you're gonna see the insides of all the pockets and you're gonna see all the seams and the seam allowances and what kind of seam allowances you're gonna use so that the insides don't fray like crazy even if you were to use lining. Every time you use a pin tuck or a tuck or a pleat or anything, you're gonna see all the guts, you're gonna see zippers and so you gotta make sure you got a great color match on the kind of zipper that you use, all those things. Number three, Shears are darker every time you fold over the shear, and so you have to render with those drapes in mind. Number four, when you are drawing your initial sketch, you have to draw all the things. When you have opaque fabrics, you draw your body, you draw your clothes. When you have a sheer fabric, you draw the body, all of the body, all the insides of the body, the dress, and then, you know, whatever undergarments go underneath. Number five, shears are sheerest when they're closest to the skin. They are less sheer the further away they get. Number six, marker and paint techniques are exactly the same, except you have to wait for each layer to dry. With paint, it's pretty easy to make up the colors because you just mix up a color and then you have all these different dilutions with different quantities of water. But then at the same time, you have to wait for each layer to dry. If you're markering, you can move fairly quickly because marker dries really quickly, but then you have to make sure that you're getting the right markers, making sure that the first marker is the exact same color as your fabric, and then your darker colors that you're using are just darker. They're not more orange or more red or more blue, but just darker. Number seven. You Number seven. Number seven, you start by rendering whatever's underneath. So whether it's undergarments, the lining of the dress, the skin, you start by rendering that. You render it lightly. You don't go to the edge of your pencil line. Just keep it a hair inside. And any shading that you do should also be done lightly and without a lot of huge contrast. Number nine, you're going to paint skin and hair and whatever the outside of the sheer fabric as you would normally. See how these legs are identical? Because they're naked, they're not wearing anything, they've got nothing on, on top. Number 10, you're going to color the whole thing in very lightly with your base color. Number 11, you're gonna take that color again, that same first color, and you're going to color anywhere where the fabric is doubled over. Drapes, design details, construction details, the back of the garment, like the back of the skirt. All those areas where things are doubled over, you're going to run your marker over them again so it's all slightly darker. Number, oh crap, so many numbers. Number 1,653, take a darker color, like the 60% gray, and you're going to punch out double, tripled over drapes. Seams, where it's five layers of fabric in a French seam. Actually, one, two, three, 
it's like six layers of fabric in a French seam. And so you're going to go run your marker over those because it's super dark, you know, rolled over edges for hems. That's going to get a dark line. Anything that is in shadow and scrunched up like these areas of the drape here and here and here, that's where you're going to get your darkest marker. And then finally, you're going to use your pencil to revitalize your drawing, you know, pump up all the details. At this point, you know, this is where you would redraw your pleats, making sure they look really beautiful. If you're adding darts, you add your darts and your seams and all that good stuff. But with your shears, you want to think about how you're going to treat whatever's inside your sheer garment. Outside, I drew it just like my opaque garment, punching out all my details. On the inside, I did not go in darkly with a pencil. I did go on the inside of the hem to make sure you're seeing that dark line of the baby roll hem. I wanted to draw a little bit of lace on the panties here, but I used this 0.3 HB pencil so that my lines are really light and really thin. And so it's not like this big detail that's popping out at you, but looks sufficiently obscured by the sheer garment. I know that's a lot of stuff, right? And this is why I'm going to do a series of these videos instead of trying to cram everything into one. Ooh, that's a lot of cop cars. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. I know that shears are a more difficult concept for many of you. In my classes, I don't do shears until the last third of my semester. Okay. It is a more advanced topic, so if you don't get it right away, don't beat yourself up. Watch the video again, ask me questions, ask me to clarify things. I will, I'm more than happy to try to explain things again in a different way and practice. Nothing beats practice for understanding a concept. See you next time.